Yeah, gentlemen, gentlemen, I must, I must disconnect the call. I, I think there are shots being fired outside the Capitol building. I, I need to go. I will have to call you back. Okay, I'll, 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 head. I'll uh, take cover as well. We start with two factories. They're both mills. We have no sis to start with. So obviously the first thing we are going to do is go with industrial complexes, which gives you three uh, sis to start off with, which will be very important to have so we can actually get going. We're going to be more or less at the mercy of foreign investment, both in our focus tree and in the role play. So the first thing we'll need to do is start securing some economic ties with other African countries as well as European powers. 29 billion debt to start off with. Our economy obviously is in total shambles. We're running a pretty big deficit, considering we have no real factories. 20% tax rate, 15% corporate tax rate. We have a GDP of 8 billion. Obviously, we're coming off of the Mengitsu regime and the famines in Ethiopia, so we have really no industry to speak of, and our country is incredibly poverty-ridden, so we have a very long route to go. We're not in the best of shape here. Obviously, we're an African Union member. We're getting US aid. We are a multi-ethnic state. We have the African brain drain, so people are getting jobs elsewhere. Uh, looming famine. We've had that on and off for quite a while. We'll have to deal with a famine, or we will get a full-blown famine. And we are, of course, non-power. So we're a bit of a clean slate. We can kind of do whatever we want with Ethiopia roleplay and ideologically speaking. So we have a lot of options here. We'll have to decide what route we want to go. Yep, 100%. We'll get the peace uh, conference in just a moment. Taking all the key centers and a lightning spearhead to the north of Eritrea, the Ethiopian government has managed to capitulate the rebels and will be forcibly reintegrating them. We're almost done with the legacy of Abyssinia, after which we're going to go into international diplomacy and go down to stabilizing the food supply. And from there, we will start to invite in foreign investors in order to actually build an economy for our nation. And we will, should be able to form a government. No? Yeah, we can. Good. All right, wonderful. We formed a coalition government, so we're in power. We're working with the Ethiopian Somalian People's Democratic Party, which is a very moderate uh, socialist party with a Western outlook. We have to decide if we want to involve ourselves in those sorts of uh, issues. Fuck, we just had famine. We just got full-blown famine. Fuck me. We're still like a year out from getting rid of it too. So we're gonna have a famine for around a year. Anyway, well, welcome gentlemen to Adi and Papa. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, we meet here under very sad circumstances. Ethiopia has fully gone back into a famine and we would appreciate that any uh, food aid that any of our fellow African members can provide. Uh, the famine has gotten significantly worse and it is beginning to become a total catastrophe. But uh, on that sad note, we will get into uh, the rest of what we are here to talk about. Obviously the African Union is an attempt to provide solidarity and unity within our continent against those who would do us harm and to help those who wish to uh, work together towards a better future in Africa. Every one of us here remembers our own histories and our histories are defined by imperialism, colonialism, and exploitative systems, which have led to this situation. It is the belief of my administration and of Ethiopia that we must continue to work together to provide both our continental and national sovereignty, as well as providing for other nations who will work with each other and not seek only exploitation. I know that Ethiopia only has the best intentions in heart for her brothers across this great continent. So thank you for being here. And I would propose one thing. If any attempts of colonization by European countries is tried, please, call all members of the African Union and let us... Colonel Gaffey has uh, beat me to that one. I was going to suggest a similar agreement. We all know what happens when the Europeans and other powers enter into our continent and take advantage of our nations. In modern times, this has proven to be very different in the past. In the past, they would directly rule us. Now, they rule us through exploitative economic means. I would ask that all nations within the African Union gather here today agree to defensive agreements for Africa to stop any form of imperialism and colonization and be willing to jointly work together to stop any exploitative agreements that the outsiders would seek from any of our nations as well as any from our brothers and sisters. But on that note, for I know Egypt doesn't want to, but for the other nations, Nigeria, Libya, Algeria, and Ethiopia, are, are you, the leaders of those nations, willing to commit to a mutual defense pact for any colonialism and imperialism against our nations? 
Nigeria will agree to the defensive pact, as we know that we can't trust, uh, well, both the East and the West uh, to not try and go back to colonialism. So, mm -hmm. yes, we support this. Hello, this is President yeah. Sadawi. Uh, uh, I, 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 no. know, I know I was invited here for, uh, for mutual uh, investment and talks about that thing. But before I even start, I would like to say that we are undergoing one of the greatest famines in the history of my country. Any aid that Germany or any other European country can give us, whether it be even the most basic foodstuffs, will save lives. And we are in desperate need of aid right now. This is a humanitarian crisis, which was obviously uh, caused by the Megizzi regime. I have done what I can to try and stabilize our food manufacturing, but it was not enough. And frankly, at this point, we cannot feed everyone in the country. So for now, um, as your nation is in a tragedy, sir, we would like to play your national anthem here in Berlin. That would be uh, really appreciated. And to your fallen people. Indeed. It's and nice now, anthem. yes, very beautiful. And now for the media, they like when we play the German anthem too. It's tradition. Of course, of course. Und Recht und Freiheit für das deutsche Vaterland. Danach lasst uns alle. Yeah, people are literally starving to death in, in, in Ethiopia and they're fucking playing their anthem. Jesus Christ. This is realistic roleplay if I've ever seen it. Great performance, Fischer. Great performance. Thank you. So, as I said, Germany will invest heavily. And Germany wants to do the greatest investment in. Hold you. Hold you. Hold your hands. In Ethiopia for the food sector. Mm -hmm. But me, Gerhard Schröder, the Chancellor of Germany, I have a very great plan for the economy of Ethiopia. We want. Oh, wait a second. As you know, um, do you know why Volkswagen was invented, sir? Uh, to, to make tanks for the Nazis, I believe. No, that's the, oh. that's, uh, that's the fake news version. Oh, okay. Volkswagen was invented, uh, was um, implemented to Germany because we wanted to give people cars mm -hmm. that are financeable. Have cars for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we want to expand Volkswagen in the African area. Well, locality, uh, uh, I mean, we, we, we would need, uh, obviously, if you wish to have uh, vehicles be a part of the Ethiopian markets, two things would need to yes, happen. Yes, Number yes, one, yes. you would need to provide very low cost vehicles. Obviously, many here can yes. barely avoid f uh, afford food, let alone vehicles. And two, obviously, we would need our economy stabilized so that our people would be willing to buy these products. But having uh, Volkswagen manufacturing plants within Ethiopia would obviously uh, be absolutely fantastic for giving our people uh, jobs. Yes. We want to have... it, it becomes more needed, so we are greatly appreciative. Again, pe people are dying in mass here, it, it, and again, every moment I spin away, more are dying, and the protests grow larger. I've just received uh, reports from my advisors that there is now a at least uh, ten thousand people protesting in the capital right now. So we we need to do something about that. And I know my government has absolutely nothing it can currently do. I will do a great investment right now in the area of Addis Abeba. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you. God bless your people. Yep, we are people. standing by you. Take Germany your hair shorter. We are very appreciative for Germany's aid. We will not forget this. Send food. But... Any any food you can send us would be appreciative as well as medical equipment. Uh, we, uh, we are beginning to have mass disease outbreaks as well due to uh, a very tough situation. And gentlemen, gentlemen, I must, I must disconnect the call. I, I think there are shots being fired outside the Capitol building. I, I need to go. I will have to call you back. Okay, I'll, 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 head. I'll uh, take cover as well. There has been a revolution. The protests did not stay peaceful for long. There is now a full-blown revolution happening within our country. Our troops are in really bad places for this right now. Nigeria's investing in us. Wonderful. We have a massive famine. A massive civil war. Ethiopia is just absolutely in complete and total chaos right now. Like, it is so bad. Yeah, so just a reminder, guys, we do have debilitating debts at a 50% interest rate. We're going to basically say that the debt is immoral due to the interest rate due to our famine. And as such, we are going to default on our debts and refuse to pay back anything. 
it. So, all right, wonderful. We won the civil war. We have secured power. We will concentrate our forces in the capital whilst we attempt to stop the famine. Hello, um, this is a representative from South Korea. We are wondering on you are, so to speak, saying that you want to fix this famine, but you drag this country into a civil war. Drag this country into a civil war. Do you have any evidence to back that statement up? There was a civil war, so to speak. Why would Correct. You want a civil so would war? you like Why me to you... educate you, Ambassador, on how exactly the civil war occurred? Yes, very well. Please do. Do you know well that Zanami was off working with Europeans to secure economic investment during the middle of a famine? There was a mass protest in our capital of Addis Ababa where hundreds of thousands came out to protest due to the famine which was in our country. Zanami failed to even acknowledge the protests and as such, the people saw fit to put me into power. There was no coup. There was no overthrowing of the government. After I entered the presidential palace, Zanami offered to step down. As he did, he uh, agreed to step down. His party backed that statement. A splinter group of that party under the control of a minor government official declared a revolution and many other splinter groups, including terrorist ones, known terrorist organizations such as the Eritrean rebels and hardliner uh, Salafis joined into a coalition to overthrow this government, which we put down. I utterly reject the suggestion of your country that this was a civil war perpetrated by guy my government if you will look at my country you will find my approval ratings almost at 50 percent the highest in recent memory in ethiopia so i ask you again I, do you have any I, evidence I, to back the statement up yes i have a question though mm -hmm. for um is your uh formerly i guess the uh, former leader going to europe to try to secure economic um stability and there, there was a live think. video coverage of him sitting there and listening to national anthems while our people starved. He was securing economic relationships with Volkswagen while our people starved. That was unacceptable. And this is not something that the people will accept in Ethiopia. I want security, economic, um, stabil helping to ec economic stability to help try to stop the, the famine, the horrible famine. How was that a bad thing? I feel like if they secure economic stability in your country that would help with the famine but anyways like a lot of i'm um, not not saying it's your fault now that you've educated me but the civil war dragged on securing or causing are you aware that we did not give adequate supplies to our troops due to relieving the famine are you aware that our military was fighting understaffed due to prioritizing famine relief throughout the both occupied regions by rebels and unoccupied regions by this legitimate government were you aware of that ambassador if I ask, if you are understaffed, then how come your military is the most uh, most thing you're putting, most money you're putting into it? Currently? Your subsidies is only 0.5 billion. I have no political power. I can't change the current spending of my government due to the unwillingness of par the, the current parliament to even consider anything other than famine relief. I effectively can only do one thing as leader of this country right now, and that is famine relief. It is beyond my powers and duties to do anything else right now. If I could lower the military budget, that would be fine. But the budget doesn't exist right now. This is a country in chaos. There has been a breakdown of society our parliament barely even meets so you, you are assuming that this is a government that is functioning it is not it hasn't since the famine has fully gone ahead and the civil war happened there is no functioning it's just there was a claim of you saying that your military was underfunded when it is the mostly funded Quadruple Indeed. Year. If you, if you had uh, if you had been aware of the situation during that civil war, you would find that the logistics that was necessary to keep our military fully strengthened was not there due to the fact that it was being prioritized for famine relief. Uh, there's evidence to back this up. I won't debate it with you. But regardless, that is the case. I mean, I'm looking at the infra. I know I said you wouldn't debate it. I'm looking at the infrastructure. There's not much there, but um, all right then. I was wondering, you're a nationalist government. I've seen nationalism rising in Egypt. You've already, you've taken over. I'm not saying this is your fault, but you've already expanded your borders. And I'm wondering if you're expanded my borders. Would you like to clarify that statement? Arabia. Sorry. Arabia. I don't know. I don't. Arabia. I don't know. Eritrea say, has been a Eritrea, province of yeah. Ethiopia after our uh, independence. There is no sovereign Eritrean state that was a province in rebellion and was dealt with. We find great issue with your government if you are acknowledging Eritrea as an independent country from Ethiopia. Eritrea is is currently occupied. The people I don't believe that people support 
your occupation. In that, in that case, we are going to end this meeting. I will not discuss with an ambassador who acknowledges the rebel government in Eritrea. This meeting is over. I will have security right, show you out, ambassador. All right. All right. Goodbye. Obviously, we are still dealing with a famine, but we're really close to starting to get it under control. The Selassie government, since obviously taking power during the Civil War, but especially now that the Civil War is done, is doing nothing but focusing on obviously famine relief for our country. Our government is considered illegitimate by most of the world, but uh, we will not stand for that. Obviously, Parliament has been suspended for now after the Civil War, and we will have to decide if we are going to bring it back or not. Okay. Herr Selassie, the Chancellor of Germany is here. Ah, hello. Welcome to Addis Ababa. What can I do for yes. you? Um, thanks for having us, me and my vice president here in your great country. I was just concerned about the crisis and just wanted to ask if everything is good now. We are finally starting to get things under control thanks to the generous aid we've received from countries such as yourself. As we said, um, Germany is there for you. We stand 100% behind the people of Ethiopia. So we are asking you, do you need anything more like food? Or if, you, if, you, if you, for the next two months or three months, if you would be continuing to provide us the humanitarian uh, shipments of food, we would appreciate it to alleviate the issues. We have begun to get our own agricultural and imports back under control. So we will be fine within two months or so. But if you could continue to supplant our our, uh, our economy and our agriculture until then, that would be greatly appreciated. We will do this. Wonderful. Another and brand new foreign policy. Um, our priority is Africa too, because as you said, you guys, um, you are the nations of the future, and Germany wants to support you from the beginning. We are very glad to hear that, and we look forward to having a very useful and uh, mutually beneficial partnership with Germany. As, we, as you know, Ethiopia has very good coffee, really good coffee. In Fantastic fact. coffee. Some of the best yeah, in the world. And, oh, yeah, exactly. Mm. And uh, we uh, would be willing to, to have a trade agreement for coffee. To Germany, that would be greatly appreciated. Like, uh, like if, if, if we if we could build, if we could begin to uh, diversify our agricultural production, obviously prior to the breakdown of the civil war and famine, we were beginning to have a burgeoning coffee uh, export economy here in Ethiopia. If we could rebuild that and begin to obviously balance our own. Uh, agricultural means hopefully through uh, imports as well as domestic production but we would allow more of our arable farmland to be used for coffee which of course we would be happy to prioritize to our good allies in germany with a trade treaty wonderful obviously yeah, it will not be a protectionist market we expect you to be competitive but assuming that's there we will give you priority of course yeah, that's great so mr joshka fischer lassen sie uns zurück nach berlin let's go yes. back to berlin take my flight thanks to for berlin, having bro. us danke we will speak soon alles yes. gut vielen dank Dankeschön. Uh, guten Tag. Guten Tag. Passen Sie auf sich auf. Thank you. The UN calls upon the representative from Turkey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we would like to bring to the attention of the international community that uh, the House of Solomon within the once great nation of Ethiopia uh, has arisen. In the in the horn of africa and due to its historical context i believe that it should be a grave concern for fellow uh, au members in the african union and um we we would like to uh, get international support for from uh, other nations to embargo the once proclaimed nation of ethiopia and revoke their recognition of it uh, and only refer to them as the House of Solomon. Thank you. And lastly, we acknowledge the speaker from Ethiopia. I am Zera Selassie, the great grandson of Hale Selassie, the last emperor of Abyssinia. From this day forth, we will no longer be known as Ethiopia, but rather the kingdom of Abyssinia. I am proud to announce that we have formally ended the famine in Ethiopia, which has plagued us for the last couple of years. This was a leftover from Mengitsu's government, and we will purge it from our history many are wondering if i will remain in power and i will but let it be known that we will be a constitutional monarchy parliament will be re rebuilt i will call for immediate elections 
I am one of the most popular leaders in Ethiopian history, and I attend to rule, but only democratically. This is not a dictatorship. This is a constitutional monarchy. To those who have called out against us and refused to acknowledge our government, we will not forget it. And we'd like to formally thank Germany for being a very good friend to our government in dealing with our humanitarian crisis. Thank you. That is all. Yeah. All the important people are in the conference. No one else, I think, will really work with us. So we just got we just gotta hold it out on this one. We just have to keep the ship steady. We are starting to get some forward investments, so over time we will be able to stabilize the economy, and then after that we'll be able to get some political power, but it will take quite a while. Our government and the role play is just in absolute shambles. Obviously, the protests destroyed most of the government uh, government uh, buildings in Addis Ababa, and many of the bureaucrats were either killed or uh, spread throughout Ethiopia, so rebuilding our government will take quite a lot of time here. Uh, hello, House Solomon. Uh, Zara Jacob. This is uh, Zara Salasi. What can I do for you? I was last um, we have, there's been a, uh, I think, told to notify you of a UN, so Security Council resolution, which uh, dictates a autonomous region for Eritrea. Now, this won't have to be independent, rather just a puppet state. Um, so this will require you to release it under, release it from direct occupation we have received no aid during our famine from the united nations and therefore will not acknowledge anything the united nations decrees okay so uh part of the resolution was if you refuse there'll be an embargo by well this select nations very well it's not all nations but select nations okay uh, we do not acknowledge entities who will not provide us aid during our harshest times and therefore utterly reject that notion wow not only does the UN refuse to send our starving people aid, not only do they ignore the civil war in our country and provide us no help, but they dare to demand the rebels, the few rebels in Eritrea who rebelled against us receive independence. The UN is a joke. Hello there. I am Zara Selassie. I am the newly instituted leader of Ethiopia. I would like to start by laying many minds to rest here. I will not be a dictator. I will not be a tyrant. As soon as I am able, I will be opening up elections in my country. And if needed, I will step down. We have solved the famine in this country. And we utterly reject the notion that we are a rogue actor and rogue state. The embargo by the US and their corrupt allies is nothing more than a political ploy to take advantage of our country. We are given an ultimatum by the UN Security Council to either release Eritrea, which is a province of Ethiopia, as an independent country, which is a joke. We do not acknowledge the sovereignty of Eritrea. And we, of course, rejected it. And as such, we have been embargoed by the US. The other nations who voted for this resolution were the Russians and the Indians. So I would caution all members of the African Union from making deals with the Russians, the French, and the Indians, who clearly do not respect the territorial sovereignty and interests of Africa. On that note, we are beginning to get back under control, but we do have a rapidly escalating debt crisis again, as our interest rates are going up very aggressively. Any aid provided by the other African community members would be greatly appreciated, but not required. I wish to call this meeting to make you aware of our situation and the situation that the Security Council and uh, those hostile nations to Africa wish to uh, make towards our, our, our union and Africa as a whole. Moreover, I, there's another matter that we have to attend to with Morocco and another one with Egypt. So I would like to start with that. As you all know, Morocco is not a founding member of the African Union and as such is not a member. They have requested to join as well as join the mutual defense pact against imperialists and colonizers that we ratified at the last meeting. I suggest that we do a roll call vote for that. Is anyone opposed? Nay. Like you're, you're opposed to the vote or you're opposed to them joining? Uh, opposed to voting against. Okay, let's do a roll call vote then. For Morocco's membership of the African Union, Algeria, unanimous decree, Morocco is granted membership into the African Union, and we would be happy to have them in the mutual defense pact in regards to colonizers and Europeans, which may prove very necessary, as I think we all know France has returned to its nationalist and monarchist ways. Not the constitutional monarchy like us either, rather the imperialist and tyrannical ones of old. Since, since Absenia which, uh, returned its, its elections, I believe that it's in my opinion. I believe that they could keep. Uh, I can say the country. 
Uh, Eritrea. Eritrea, thank you. Uh, USA, USA, what are they saying here is that they will not give back Eritrea and they, will, they claim that Eritrea is a, uh, a bunch of terrorists. Uh, we are we seek global security, so of course it concerns. So you security. support terrorists in order to maintain the supposed security. We aren't supporting any specific. President Harold, if I was supporting the KKK in your country or militant Islamics, would we not have a very different situation? We are not supporting any party in particular. Rather, we are. Yes, you said you were. As 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 the United <laughs> as the U.S. So the UN Security Council has all agreed on. By the way, so this isn't just. You America. agreed on the releasing of the nation of Eritrea that doesn't exist. They did not agree to support the terrorist organization within Eritrea. That is you alone, we, we President Harold. We have not Herald. supported any. We have not supported any uh, terrorist organization. You have any organization. You supported within the uh, yeah, the Eritrean yeah, rebels, yeah, which yeah. are terrorists. While, while while we're aware now that uh, that resistance to the to the regime is minimal, initially it was large and it was brutally suppressed. It was and do you have any actual evidence to back this up? Because I've heard none the, from you. The North Korean government would also like to object to this. We had generals on the ground in Eritrea during this, and we saw no evidence of Ethiopia. The Ethiopian the armies army of the rebel groups in that Eritrea. region surrendered and were treated properly. By this, uh, by what I've heard here, I will say that. U.S. will retract all of its diplomatic actions towards the port of uh, the Empire of Abyssinia, but we will need to have observers around the port. We will, uh, is this, is, like this your, is this your attempt to start doing stand-up, President oh, Lula? Oh, oh, because oh, that is oh, a oh, joke oh, of a suggestion oh, to oh, us. Oh, 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 American oh, observers, oh, they will be simply yeah. tools of imperialism in my country, hold and you on, know it. Hold on, we would agree to the we would agree to this, but we have a caveat that we'd like to add. All right. We would like observers. Uh, to make sure that you are not treating the Confederate States of America wrongly, and that we make sure that you do not take action against that uh, support that sovereign country within your country. So you seem to be supporting the Confederate we, we, States of America. We need to have, we, we, there we need to be Abbasidian observers in the so Confederate States of America. Well, then, if we're going to talk about facts, then why don't you stop referring to Eritrea like this way and suggesting that there is a need for observers? Where was the U.S. observers in aid during our famine? Where was the US then? You only care now because you wish to take a puppet nation out of the kingdom of Abyssinia and you know it. This is unacceptable and we reject this notion. I will say this. We would allow a UN, we would, hold on, let me speak. We would allow an UN observation force to come in an Eritrea to confirm that there were no war crimes or any other matters. But we would also ask, due to the absurdity of this, that the UN mission be sent to the southern states of America to ensure that they are also being treated fairly, since that is as absurd as this suggestion is.